fighting me, girl. Well, it's the first time I ever dated an octopus. Well, you're not supposed to resist, Audrey. That's no way for a potential delinquent to act. Yeah. Oh. You're sitting back out of lesson psychology 50 years. Come on, Joe, I've got to get home. Hey, you're a clock watcher, Mary. Why'd you two get married? Take and relax. Uh, Bob's gonna talk to Mary's old man about it. He's waiting till he gets hold of a bulletproof vest. Oh. <laughs> What's the occasion, Audrey? Your folks are really cutting it up. Since when do the Bartons need an occasion to get loaded? Hey, let's crash the party. I love to watch those squares when they panic. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Quarter to one, I promised my oh, father. No, oh, come on, let me up. Try it the best you can. Charleston, Miss Watson? That is, if your rheumatism isn't too bad. Delight. <laughs> <laughs> Charleston, Charleston. Yeah, but with me helping you, it can be an adventure. Oh, I'm blowing the grease unknown with Tommy Bird! Ta -da! I, I trust you're turning in your assignment this morning, Audrey. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Petrie, but my boyfriend insisted that I see the moon from the top of Makeout Mountain. <gasps> oh, but it was highly educational, Miss Petrie. I'm afraid you'll never graduate high school with, with what you learned there, Audrey. Oh, I'll try much harder, Miss Petrie. <laughs> Incorrigible, that's what you are. Incorrigible. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, come on Joe. Oh, let's yeah, go. come on. Let's really roll that. Let's roll that. Hey, man, they're having themselves a ball. I gotta get in. You got blowing up a storm. Take a look at your old granny's laws. Man, your old man's really pouring it on. Who's the baby he's with anyway? Oh, he's really gone. Go on, go, man, go! <laughs> well, you're having a very nice party, Ruth. If you thought your guests wouldn't miss you, we might take a look at the moon. There's no moon tonight. Oh, it's there. It will take us a little longer to find it. I'm sure your husband wouldn't miss you. I'll go in the back door. Thanks for a swell evening, too. Hey, that's no way to say goodnight to a day. It is to this one. Well, it's a matter of principle. Nobody says goodnight to me by just talking, eh? Please let me go. Oh. Trigger down. This is the one I shouldn't. All the more reason. <laughs> Let me go! Well, what will the kids say? I won't be able to look him in the eye. We're being a little silly, aren't we? Tomorrow's another sober day. like I dated the wrong Barton. Next time I'll try your mother. <laughs> Audrey? I'm sorry, Ruth. It wasn't fatal. Wake the warden up. Your lipstick off, Mary? Papa Rubeck don't allow no painted women around here. I'll be back in a minute. Not much can happen in a minute, Bobby boy. Take two. We're in no rush. Man, listen to that horn. That's the coolest.
bring you home, I feel like I'm bringing you back to a prison or something. It's not that bad. I guess I'm used to it. Have you told him about us yet? Are you afraid to? We don't need his consent. We can go away somewhere and get married. I couldn't do it like that, Bob. I just couldn't. You could if you loved me enough. How many ways are there for a girl to prove she loves someone? If I overlooked anything, tell me what it is, Bob. I love you. Now, ain't that a sight? My own daughter making love with one of her tramp friends. Tell him about us, Mary. Now's a good time as any. Please go home, Bob. Tell him. Tell him what? What I've been expecting to hear for the past year? Am I going to become a grandfather, Mary? Is that it? Oh, Bob! <laughs> it could be that. All I have to do is look at you. And I see a mother all over again. Bob, please, for once, listen to me. We... We want to get married. <laughs> so you want to get married? Now, that's something. How old are you, Mr... What's your name? My name is Bob Harris, and I'm 20. 20, he says. And Mary's 17. Lots of girls in high school are getting married, Pa. Lots of tramps are. Not respectable girls. <laughs> and how will you keep her? What will you start housekeeping with, uh, besides a bed? And who will feed you when you get out of bed? We love each other, Pa. I'm going into the service. She'll get a place near the camp. We'll make out all right. Go home, sonny boy. Go home and wipe your nose. And don't come back here again. I see you talking to Mary. I'll take you across my knee and lick you. Boy, there's going to be a fight. Here, let's get out of here. Come with me now, Mary. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. <laughs> Are you coming, Mary? You're going alone. And it looks like I got to help you. Get out there. He may need some help. Are you crazy or something? Not me. I don't want to marry her. Please go home, Bob. <laughs> All right. You should have loved the stinking tyrant. I was going to help you, Bob, but... Oh, sure you were, Sir Galahad. Oh, let's get rolling. Any new thing? see that boy again. Don't worry. I've seen the last of him. You made sure of that. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Just a minute. The girl's vice principal of the school phoned me at the shop today. Miss Iverson? She wants me to come and see her about your work. It isn't very good. I didn't want to take this year. I wanted to take business school. I begged you. I don't want you a lipstick stenographer. I promised myself when your mother ran out on me, I'd make something decent out of you. Maybe a teacher, maybe a librarian, somebody respectable. And that's the way it's going to be. You understand me? Can I go to bed now? I'll not have another evil woman in this house. Your mother was enough. My father used leather on me when I was older than you. And I'll do the same. You 
know that I mean it, don't you? Education tomorrow. Rah, rah, rah for Belton High. Hey, Joe. How come you don't go for me the way Bob does, Mary? That's all I need a forever female. Like I need a square hole in my head. Well? I don't feel like turning in yet, Joe. Hey, let's go set off some burglar alarms or something. Come on, Joe. You got rocks? Hey, you're crazy. You want to get yourself killed? That's an idea. Joe. Come on up and let's listen to some music. I promise not to get fresh. Listen to her. One of these days, pow! Oh, hand someone else that jazz, Joe. You're afraid of me, aren't you, Joe? Okay. Okay, I'm, a, I'm afraid of you. So long, Angie. It was a blast. Punk! High school punk! Why, Tony! Uh, hi, you sis. Been out catting around? Call some small town room. You know? That figures. Hey, what's going on? Well, I brought a friend of mine along with me. She's in there making some coffee. She's the best little coffee maker in California. Where'd she learn how? State prison? <laughs> yeah, she's still sharp, aren't you, Angie? <laughs> Razor sharp. It's my sister, Angela. This is Dixie Jackson. Hi. Have some coffee? How nice of you to ask. Oh, you'll find a cup in the kitchen, honey, and bring back the sugar with you. Well, are you sure it's all right? <laughs> yeah. What's frothing her? I've seen happier convicts being led to the gas chamber. Too much up here. She thinks. Thinking makes her brood, and brooding makes her Angie the terrible. <laughs> what brings home the prodigal son, Tony? Fatted calf. What else? Well, it looks like you brought that with you. Oh, nice kid. I better search her for poison darts. How old is she? She'll be... I'll be 18 in four months. About half your age? Oh, what formula did your mother feed you on? Vinegar and what else? All right, stop biting each other. I, uh... I need some money, Angie. Well, I suppose you heard the treasure's away. She's at Acapulco with Daddy number three. Looking around for number four, I guess. I know, I spotted it in the papers this morning. First thing in the morning, he reads the society pages. <laughs> oh, and who'd know that better than you? Oh, this kid's been practicing. What do you do, goggle with acid every morning? Will you cut it out? Now, come on, get that money for me. Well, I've only got $18. Well, that's fine. Get it. It's been great. Well, I've got 65 cents in change. Can I keep it? I'm making a do-it-yourself time bomb, and I need it for the parts. Keep it. Here. I still get you home. Yeah, the hard way in the bus, sitting up all night. That'll be something for you, won't it? <laughs> You're all right, kid. Have a nice visit, and a profitable one. If you see any cops, duck. Same for you. Only for you, I'd better make it cops and women. <laughs> Swell A out you have here, Angie. If I had something like this to come home to, I'd throw that brother of yours out of a 12th-story window. <laughs> Dixie's a reformer at heart. The only thing that stops is a taste for three steaks a day and expensive perfume. Well, see you in a week. If not, I'll write you from jail. Hey, Tony, what's this bit about the police? Oh, just clowning around. How's Mom? Who sees her? the last time you did then? It was five months ago. You know, Tony, she was younger and prettier than ever. She feels too old when I'm around her, so she just stays away. What's he like, number three? I haven't spoken to him a dozen times since they've been married. 
Good old mom. It's a sack for me. Tony, Tony, take me with you when you go. There's nothing in this town for me. I hate it. <laughs> You'll feel better in the morning. You're on a self-pity check. Tony, I'll stay out of your way if you take me. I can't even look after myself. Let alone a sister. What's to do in Berlin, population 11,000, elevation 1,400 feet for a whole week? Die of boredom, not just me. like me. Not me. I'll make something happen. I fly faith. I saw the light under your door, so I thought I'd come in and say goodnight. Oh, you got this when you were four. I never thought she'd still be important to you at 18. Maybe I've never grown up. Maybe I'm a psycho. Oh, Nancy, you said you didn't hear me that way. You'll be a woman soon. Got to start talking to you as a woman. You may be somebody's wife before the year is up. Not me. It's not impossible. I heard that a lot of senior class girls will be married before fall. I tell you what. We'll go shopping for summer things this Saturday. We'll make a day of it. Tommy Burns was with me. He saw you and Mr. Stevens and it'll be all over school tomorrow. You oughtn't be so terrified at what people say and think. You've got to learn how to rise about that sort of thing. I can't. You don't know how those kids are. I've got a streak of mid-Victorianism you that must have come from your father's side of the family. An urge to live in the shadows. To be a Miss Anonymous. I won't let you all there. I'll conquer that impulse in your father. I'll conquer it in you too. The whole town will know by tomorrow morning. I wish I could stay here in bed for the rest of my life. Not have to face anyone. Oh, baby. I'm sorry I did what I did. And I'm sorrier that you saw. You'll understand someday. You'll get to be a certain age, and well, if you let yourself, your whole life seems to be behind you. The fun, the excitement, so once in a while I would take a few drinks and do the things young people do, and recapture it for a brief moment. There was nothing, really nothing wrong about him. Mr. Stevens, Your ideas I... of right and wrong don't jive with anyone else's. I'm not anyone else. I'm Ruth Barton, just as you, my daughter Audrey. I'm just trying to explain myself to you, a woman to woman. But I see you're not ready for that approach yet, so I'll leave you to sulk with your dolls. last night. I'd like to dig a hole and pull it over. <laughs> we ought to start a club of our own. We call it the Three Nowheres. First item of business, a vote of non-confidence in the world. Especially that part of it inhabited by our parents. Too bad they can't see themselves as we do. They take gas. I know my mother would. What about you, Audrey? I don't think it's their fault altogether. I was just born in the wrong family. The trouble with you is you're too passive. You take things as they come. I'm turning over a new leaf. Well, will you let me know when you launch this new Audrey? <laughs> What are you doing to my daughter? I was taking the spinster out of her eyes. Then why were you kissing her on the lips? It was a very long spinster. <laughs> Go away and don't ever come back. But Daddy, I love him. I truly, truly do. That's 
right, sir. I've come to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Take it and go. But the rest of her stays with me. <laughs> Can you cook with one hand, daughter? <laughs> show you what I mean by active resistance. Please, Angie, you'll only make it worse. Go! But, sir, <laughs> sir, you don't seem to understand. This is the real jazz. <laughs> <laughs> and now, for act two of the incorrigible, the scene is in a different section of the city. A party is in progress. Kiss me, you cool kid. But what would my husband say? What should he say? He's busy kissing my wife. <laughs> You're about to see the new Audrey in action. I'm with you. Audrey! Angela. Angie had nothing to do with it. It was my fault. I wasn't speaking to you. However, Audrey, I'm sure that if you'd been a little more selective in your company, you wouldn't be making this display, no. Misery loves company. And since so much of it comes from you, you're responsible for you it. You keep your caustic tongue to yourself. Now, I'm warning you, Angela. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I'll have to report you to the vice principal. Afraid? You'll love every minute of it. Oh. Hey, we were only kidding. Yeah, where's your sense of humor? You killed it. Now beat it, punks. Oh, here. This is the first time I fought back, and it felt good. You can never win, but it's sure fun to try. You home early. Couldn't do much at the office today. Head felt like a football. One being used in the Army-Navy game. You did tie one on last night, didn't you? And you? Oh, well. Hmm. <gasps> well. Baby. What happened to you? I was in a fight. You ought to be proud of me, Mom. I rose above the masses. I was highly individual. Well, that sort of things could be carried to extremes. You've got to watch those extremes. I didn't know there was such a thing in this house. Miss Iverson said she was going to call. Did she? Yes. Did she tell you I was on the poison list? Poison list? Someone who couldn't possibly graduate this year. You do take life seriously, don't you? If you like, we'll send you to a private school next year. Something really exclusive. Frankly, the whole matter of school is relatively unimportant for you. It's just a genteel way of marking time till the right man comes along. But if you like, we'll send you to one of the finest schools in the country. Oh, sure. If it can be bought, you'll buy it for me. Close school, anything. Well, I'm, go I'm going to my room. She's really upset. She's at a moody, soul-searching age. She'll snap out of it. Well, maybe we ought to quiet down a little bit. You know, you yourself said that that affair last night really shook her. Oh, well. Maybe I'm not the dedicated parent I should be. But I'm not subordinating my life to hers. I give her freedom to live her own life. In return, I want mine. Yeah, but maybe a kid that age uh, needs guidance rather than freedom. Someone to set a pattern for. Oh, you know, George, 
How that sort of talk bores me. Yeah. I do love her, but I won't just stagnate while she matures. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, I'm sure I do. <laughs> Look, they say girls are much closer to their fathers than their mothers. Why don't you go up and have a talk with her? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, maybe uh, a little later. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> it's always tomorrow, isn't it? I never thought I'd see you again after the other night. Neither did I. But here I am. Get in. I promised my father... I've got to talk to you, Mary. I'm leaving Monday for the service. If anyone wanted me as much as Bob wants Mary, I'd run out on any father in this stinking wide world. <laughs> Thought you might like a ride home, Angie. Boy, you must be stuck for something to do. Audrey Parton, this is my brother, Tony. The blackest black sheep in any family. <laughs> now you know all about me. Forewarned is forearmed, they say. And that's how many you'll need with him around. Four. You don't look like a high school kid to me. You could pass for 21. All over. She's jailbait, no matter how you kid yourself, Tony. Set your eyes back in place and let's go. Where can we drop you off, sis? Audrey and I have some things to talk about. Some talk. I'm heading in one direction. Home. And I've walked it many times. Okay, okay. So I don't dazzle you. Got more than $200 saved up. You'll get a place near the camp and we'll do all right. Have you told your parents about us? Yeah. Stock answers. You're too young to get married. Wait till you're out of the army. <laughs> Maybe they're right. They're not. Some men are kids at 30. Some kids are men at 20. I'm old enough to wear a uniform. I'm old enough to love you the way I do. I'm old enough to marry you. Bob. Bob, listen to me. It's important you know how much I love you. How much I want to marry you. But... I'm not very smart. I'm not much good at putting things into words. Listen to me and don't say anything. You know about my mother. One day my father came home from work. And she was gone. Ran out on him. He's been taking it out on you ever since. He's built his whole life around me. It hasn't been a very good one for either of us. I've often thought of leaving home, running away. I'd start to pack, then I'd stop. Even while I was hating him with everything in me, I'd start putting my things back. Even while I was hating him, I'd be loving him. I'd see him there alone, thinking the second woman in his life ran out on him. You owe me something too, Mary. We can wait a little while. Sooner or later, he'll just have to start thinking of me as a woman. Then, Bob, it'll be different. I can't buy that, Mary. I don't want to wait. I want to 
going to get kicked in the pants every time I stop to talk to you. Come on, let's go home. Mom. Kiss me first. Pick you up at 8 o'clock. How about it? Jailbait, Tony. So I live dangerously. 8 o'clock? I'm not in your league. I just promoted you. I'll look over my new contract and think it over. You're dead, brother. She's a thinking type. She's got class, that kid. And scruples. Why, <laughs> you'd be wasting your time. Tony! I'm all ears. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Who's dead, sis? Getting late. He'll be home soon. But I don't see you before I go. I don't see how. My first leave's in 30 days, Mary. I want an answer then. Either we get married or we forget about it. Don't say that, Bob. I'm saying it and I mean it. Goodbye, Bob. I mean it, Mary. Thanks for a wonderful evening. Don't spoil it. Enough is enough. The night is young and you're so beautiful. When do I see you again? Oh, five, six years. <laughs> Maybe. I told you to start with what kind of girl I was. <laughs> if I promise no more wrestling matches. <laughs> no kidding, I enjoyed being with you. I did too. Till just now. If I promise to keep it clean, come on, give me a chance to <laughs> prove it. Tomorrow morning at 10, we're right out to the beach. <laughs> All right, Tony. It's a standing date for a week. Every morning at 10. Oh, there's a little matter of school. <laughs> You'll say a vacation. since you stayed home for an evening. I didn't think you'd noticed. With Tony Forrest? It's a ball to be with him. He's a riot. He's a bum. Are you telling me I can't go? Of course not, Hugh. There's a roadhouse opening at the edge of town, and Tony insists on being a first-nighter. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fun. When did you start smoking? Just something I picked up. I'll probably be quite late. Oh, that's all right, Ian. You know where the key is. Have fun. Audrey. Yes? <clears throat> Mommy. Something's happened to that girl. I never saw a dress like that before. Like a nightclub singer. And the way she picked up that cigarette. That was the shock treatment. Shock treatment? Yes. She was supposed to start listening to forbidding her to go out with Tony again. Well, why didn't we? Oh, because she is 18 soon. 
She has to learn how to cope with the Tonys of the world. I hope you know what you're doing. I do. Well, I was a kid, I'll tell you the news. Now, if you'll stop mumbling and, and, and read your paper quietly, I have to complete my list for Audrey's birthday party. What's the matter with you? You sick? I'm all right. Just feel a little dizzy, that's all. Well, put your mind on your studies and it'll pass away. It's no use, Pa. I just can't cram this much before the finals. Geometry. You'll write this geometry and you'll pass it. I'm dumb, Pa. I can't help it. Then you'll work that much harder. One Ruback woman will walk down the street with pride. All right, Pa. You won't bring shame into this house. I won't let you. transferred to the shop. I was able to figure that out. This came for you. An invitation to Audrey Barton's birthday party. You're not going. They're trash, rich trash. I won't have you partying at their house. on with your lessons. You have to sit at this table from now on in. Well, what's on the menu tonight? Bring around the rosy? Audrey likes the beach at night, so salt water, here we come. How about you? Oh, a movie, I guess. Hey, isn't the chairman of the board due back? Dixie? Yeah. Pretty soon. Oh, I should have warned Audrey. The big pitch is coming up. Oh, huh? no, it's nothing like that. She's good for laughs. Well, how do I look? Like a high-class con artist. Well, thanks a lot, kid. Enjoy the movie. Where's Angela? You said she'd be home. Oh, she probably went down to the corner to get some cigarettes. Well, it's after 11. Maybe you'd better take me home. Now, nah, come on. Sit down a minute. You don't have to go. Let's have a drink. I don't drink. Now, nah, come on. Let's drink just one. Let's have a little music, okay? You're a big girl. Huh? Oh, they were just rehearsing the school play, Dixie. It looked more like a new dance step to me, a Tony Skunk Hop. Or maybe they were playing tag and Audrey was it. Yeah, just horsing around here. Yeah, sure. Did you make a contact with your old man's bank account? $300, that's all he had. I'm ready to tee you off now. Well, you fought him off. Good for you. I've got to go home. Angie tells me you've got a nicer setup than this. Well, I wouldn't trade the key to your front door for ten Tonys. Twenty. I told you she's got the makings of a reformer. I'll drive you home, Audrey. I'll drive her home, Tony. You get your things packed. We've got to be in L.A. tomorrow. I've got something lined up. Now, give me your car keys. I'll be glad to ditch this one long term. It 
Tony, take me with you. You've got a maid here. There's nothing here for me. Well, I've got even less to give you. Tony, sometimes I get so awfully lonesome up here, I could light a fire. <laughs> Just hear the firemen coming. I'll send you some bright, cheerful letters from L.A. I got a pack. Hi, Mom. You going to Audrey's party? Can't go. Audrey begged you to call it off. But you know Mrs. Barton. Boy, we sure drew ourselves a crummy lot of parents, didn't we? Not if you asked them, we didn't. <laughs> you know, I got a letter from my mother yesterday. They're bored with Acapulco. So they're off to Buenos Aires. How long will they be gone? Who knows? Who cares? I'm checking out of this town. This life. But where will you go? I've got Tony's address. I'll park on his doorstep and he'll have to let me stay. I wish I were going with you. But what's stopping you? I don't know myself. Boy, I've had all of this my thwarted mind can take. Me invited to Arbor's party? <laughs> Why should she ask me? I don't drink and I don't carouse around with older men. <laughs> <laughs> She's just trying to get a rise out of you. Oh, forget that nitwit. Audrey, I'm leaving town. You want to come along? Oh, you've said that before. Los Angeles is the burning candle. And I'm the more. The inevitable, inexorable attraction is there. Oh. Listen to the words. She could be an English teacher. That's what comes with reading books on long, lonely evenings. Hey, watch that cigarette. Petrie snooping around looking for an argument. I'll oblige her with pleasure. Here she comes, no kidding. You'll get expelled. Look, now's as good a time as any. Give me that cigarette. Fire own. <gasps> Look at her, lying there on the ground like some animal. In my day, girls didn't sprawl on the grass. Not in public, anyway. Oh, you filthy little vagrant. Get up! You better snipe! You're coming with me! Oh, man! Oh. You've given me the last bad ride, you water-veined old hag! Get up! You can tell the principal that he can't expel me, because I quit! I'm gonna give this torture chamber a real goodbye! So long, suckers. Baby, you like the room this way? Mother, I've got to talk to you. That's what mothers are for. The books say. Now, help me move this end table. I want to call the party off. Are you silly? I've invited only your closest friends. I have no close friends. They accept it without exception. I don't want them here. Are you ashamed of us? I just don't want to celebrate this birthday. Your friends will go green with envy when they see what your dad is getting you for a gift. I'll tell you part of it. Our trip to Europe this fall. And that's only half of it. You once called me Miss Anonymous. Someone who lived in the shadows. Well, it's true. I can't help it. I'm just not like you. You have your father's flair for mediocrity. I hope I will help you get rid of it. Well, don't worry. I've made all the arrangements. Everything will work out splendidly. Mother, if I'm humiliated, 
If I'm made the object of ridicule again, I'll... I'll leave home. Oh, baby. You do take yourself seriously, don't you? I hoped your little quarrel with Tony Forrest would have helped you to... to laugh at yourself at life. Instead, you let its grimness overwhelm you. I wish you could understand me. But I'm sure I do. Hello? Hello, Mary. You ever love in town? I just got in. When can I see you? I'm sorry, Audrey, but I won't be able to come to your birthday party. I'm cramming French for the finals on Monday. Have fun, Audrey. Okay, I dig you. See you later. I'll clean up. Go on, do your work. to help her, but she made me feel that I was in the way. Yeah, she works best alone. I found that out. Daddy, I hope you and Mother will leave us alone tonight. Alone? Without a chaperone? <laughs> Without your mother to run the show? You ought to know better than that. Ah, uh, but don't worry, baby. We won't bother you. We've invited the Bronsons and the Stevens over, and we're going to have a little party of our own. You'll spoil our party, and we'll spoil yours. Can't you understand? We live in two separate worlds, and they're completely foreign to each other. That's high school talk, adolescence. You just leave it to your mother. Daddy, please take your friends out tonight. Talk to your mother. Not that it'll do any good. I know that as well as you do. Ah, uh, but we love her, don't we? And wait till you see what we bought you. Well, that's going to make everything all right. <laughs> sure. The bigger the gift, the better the all right. Yeah, the better the all right. The be huh? <laughs> Kids. How are you going to figure them out? I can't work anymore tonight. I've got a splitting headache. I told you to go and see Dr. Noel. Why don't you? Are you afraid of him? It's just a headache. You'd feel well enough if you went to the party, wouldn't you? What's the first examination? French. Everybody should know French. It's a good language. I'll never pass it. Then you'll go to summer school and night school. I don't care how hard you have to work. I'll make a decent girl out of you. I'm a woman. A man wants to marry me. <laughs> I know what he wants. A license costs two dollars. It's cheap. There's a point of no return, Pa. Someday I'll reach it. A what? I don't understand you. Nothing. I'm going to sleep. Drag. I'm for taking off. That'll life. And I'll pull me and Barton's loaded already. Come on, let's go in. Huh? Okay. <coughs> What's the 
What's the matter, Junior? <laughs> so what's happening? What a bore. Yeah, well, I'm with you. Come on, let's go in. It's after 11. She said she'd be here. Her father's probably got her chained to the bedpost. It's pretty awful in there, isn't it? Yeah, it is for me anyway. I feel like a million years old compared to the others. Well, I'd better get in there before Audrey takes poison. Coming in? No. Wow, can't you get rid of them? I tried. I forgot to tell you this is my farewell party. I'm getting the bus to Los Angeles at 2 o'clock. Oh, Dad, I've got to talk to you. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Isn't my little girl lovely? Yeah, her friends are awful bored, but she's lovely. Lovely. Please, I've got to see you. Yeah. Later on, baby. Later on. Here is 1921. Raccoon coats are a big rage. The dance is the turkey trot. And all the cats are square, man, with a hey, nani, nani, and a hot cha-cha. What's the matter with these kids, anyway? You know, they stand around like they're in bond. Excuse me, but I need a drink. It's pretty grim so far, isn't it, dear? It wouldn't be if you'd get rid of your friends. But don't get excited. You leave it to me. I'll make an evening of it yet. Come on, kids. Get off your slabs. Oh, come on. Oh. Suddenly glad I'm not 18 these days. Come on, Joe. You dance with me. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Right. We shouldn't have made this party. Well, just beginning. We let her down. You're always so sure about everything. Come on, let's get our friends and get out. Maybe that'll make it all right. That would be admitting defeat. You know, I never do that. Maybe it wouldn't hurt you to once in a while. You're tight, aren't you? Yes, I'm tight. And I'm going to get more tight. Ha, ha, ha. Henry, is there any gin? Three bottles there. Good. Slip one under your coat. What happens now? Oh, the punch. Uh, you devil. You know, I'm certainly glad I'm not married to you. yourself lying up here. I just couldn't stand it any longer. <laughs> but it's turned into quite a party. The kids are going up in flames. Leave it to your mom. My mom? Yeah, she made something out of nothing. Come on down. What did she do? She waved her magic little wand. Come on. Hey! the most. <laughs> What's the matter? You're a success. 
time do you catch your bus? 2 a.m., the corner of 8th and Border. I'm coming with you. You are? special course in electronics. Do you know what that means? I won't see you for six months. Where to? I don't know yet. What difference does that make? You're going with me. I can't do it just like that. Run away and get married like it's a dirty thing I'm doing. It would break my father's heart. I guess you'll have to choose, Mary. Me or your father. We can wait a couple more months, Bob. Now or never. Don't say that! It's either hello or goodbye. Guess it's goodbye. <laughs> I guess I'm entitled to this much at least. Mother all over again. He even looked like her. Not here, Pa. Do anything you want to me, but not here. Here, here, here. Everybody will see. Here. We're in the Leave her alone. Get out of my way, soldier boy. I'll kill you. Go on, home, Slit. Just a friendly little argument. It's all over now. We were told there was a teenage drunken brawl going on here. Where's the rest of them? If you've been drinking, miss, leave her alone. Either one of you want to lay charges? No? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a break. I'll put it down as a public nuisance call. But no more noise. Are you two good out of here? Go on home. Come on, let's break it up. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry, baby. Oh, you've had too much already, Dad. You get away from this house. Now, look here, Rodri. I said get out of here. You better do what she said. Ruth, are you going to let us? Quite a debut, wasn't it, Mother? Wasn't it? We were lucky it should hit the front page tomorrow. 
Well, it's, uh, it's not as bad as it seems. Tomorrow we'll laugh about it. You will, Mother. Not I. Well, what do you know? We forgot to give you your gift. Come on, honey. This will make the world all right. I couldn't care less. Wait until you see it. We were going to get the whole bunch out and make a big production, but... Oh, well, what does it matter? Go on, take the cover off. Isn't she a beauty? It's all yours, dear. But what is in your name? She'll do a hundred without coaxing. Power this and power that, power everything. Can I take it for a drive? Just around the block. This time of night, it's nearly two o'clock. Why, of course, darling. Don't be late, though. I didn't do very much for Audrey, did it, Bruce? I'm afraid not. You're the one that never misses, hmm? Leave it to Ruth. She'll take care of everything. Oh, why don't you admit for once that you're wrong? Trying to make a miniature edition of yourself out of her? You never treat her like a person in her own right. I don't know what to say. I wish I could take her in my arms, like I used to when she was a little child. Then she'd cry against my shoulder and everything would be all right. I wish so too, George. driving a new convertible. We should pick them up before the afternoon is over with. I'll keep in touch with your husband at his office. What if you don't find him? Then I'll have to file a missing persons report. But don't worry, it's probably just a lark. Take it easy, ma'am. I'll let myself out, Mrs. Barton. Thank you and good day. Thank you. You'll call me here from them. It's my lunchtime. I have to go back to work. I'm sure we'll hear from them. They'll come home. She was like her mother. She was slow making up her mind, but when she did, it was for always. I tried to do what was best for her. I wanted her to be better than her mother, better than me. To have something nobody could take away from her. An education, respect. That's an important thing to a man like me. She'll come back. As if I killed her with my own hand. <laughs> Doing 90. It feels great, just like I had the whole world on the big accelerator. Oh, you're not, you're trying to kill it? <laughs> Once when I was young and naive, I read a book, and it said that one of man's most powerful urges is self-destruction. Why are we stopping? Just how far do you think we could get in this luxury yacht? For about 18 miles from Paisley. That shouldn't be too hard to hit your ride into town. One at a time. I'll go first. They'll be looking for the three of us. You really think you did out, didn't you, Angie? <laughs> no, just a lot of larceny in me. Inheritance from Mother, I guess. 
You go next, Audrey, and then you, Mary. We'll meet at the post office at 8 o'clock. And when you get into town, go into a grocery store and buy something to eat. Oh, get some milk and bottles. And don't stop in any restaurants. They may have descriptions of us. How will we get out of Paisley? You leave that to me. Some jerk will leave the keys in the car. The smaller the town, the bigger the jerk. And we're not just running away. We're stealing a car. One thing leads to another, they say. Neither of you are under contract, you know. They'll come back and take you home if that's what you want. I'll meet you at the post office. Me too. That may be the ride. I'm hungry, Mary. So am I. I don't think I've ever been hungry before in my life. It isn't very pleasant. What's so <laughs> funny? A new convertible and, and I'd trade it for a cup of coffee. A night in a girl's dormitory? What'd you phone me to hurry over for, Tony? Emergency. These kids just blew the old homestead. Well, give them some cocoa and cookies and send them home. They're hot. They heisted a car and knocked over a bike cup. Can't turn them off. You are expected, Angie. It was just a matter of time. But what are you two kids doing here? Angie sell you a bill of goods? No, we sold ourselves. Oh, it's poor trade for what you kids have at home. Well, there goes Preacher Dixie again. One bathroom when it works, a few odd cockroaches. Mm. Oh, I said cockroaches. You know, there are such things. Rent payable in advance. We have to do something with them. Well, what about eating money? You girls got some? Well, enough to buy a bottle of peroxide for your hair. Oh, sweet kid. How old did you say she was? 18 or 80? I figured they could work with you over at the mirror maid. They could stand some fresh flesh over there. All right, stand up. Turn around. Well, with a different hairdo, she'll pass for 21. All right, Angel. Now you. Well, with 
with a little padding here and there, you might pass for a woman. <laughs> well, if you fooled them for 45 years, I guess I can too. <laughs> did this kid grow or did she just happen? Oh, I'm sorry you can't make it, kid. You look too sad. The cops would want to know all about you the minute they saw you. You better get a job slinging hash or something. Oh, why don't you two kids go home? I mean it. The cops will be waiting for them. Well, it's not a big B. Probation, suspended sentence, maybe. Come on, what do you say? I'm never going home. Me neither. Okay, I'll have to get some phony identifications, social security numbers. And you'll all have to change your names. It'll cost you money, $20 a piece. And I want it back as soon as you can make it. Why did you have to go and drop this headache on me? What's in it for you? Just an urge to help my fellow man. Yeah, into a dark alley. I feel like I was just born, Tony. That's wonderful. I thought I'd like to take you out and get a bite to eat. Audrey. I'm game. I said Audrey. Uh-oh, looks like you've got your work cut out for you. I'm very tired, Tony, if you don't mind. Okay. We've got a lifetime ahead of us. How long is it now? I can't even count anymore. A week. I hired a firm of private detectives to try and find her. They feel sure she's in Los Angeles. If I could only talk to her. I sit here all day long thinking what I would like to say to her. I uh, thought maybe we'd have somebody over tonight and play a little bridge or something. I don't want anyone over. Neither do I. investment in you. I don't feel very good tonight. Is it all right if I just stand here and watch? Oh, honey, you shouldn't be here. You'll starve at this racket. Even on a good night, you only stand to make seven or eight dollars. And you've done nothing but hold up this wall ever since you started. You know, um, most of the girls have side rackets. What's yours going to be? Side racket. Sure. Some of them work as shills for gambling guys or after hour liquor joints, and some of them uh, just like company. Oh, you too, honey. It comes automatic after a while. Well, that was wonderful. Oh, I'll, I'll bet you five tickets I know what kind of work you do. You're on. I bet you it's something to do with horses. Well, I'll be. How did you know? I'm a trainer. Guess womanly intuition. <laughs> Go on, baby. Stop paying it off. How do you know I'm dancing when you keep pulling away? Well, I gave you my ticket. You're taken. Take all of them. in the world. Plenty of money. You're not 
doing so good, huh? I'm going to find another job. Oh, sure. The police will pick you up in two days. Look, you might as well make a career out of this, baby. It's either this or jail. The guy's got a roll. Help him spin it. If you don't, somebody else will. Turn him over to me. You take Angie. <laughs> she won't go hungry. Your own sister, and you let her do that. Well, I didn't ask her to come up here. And as long as we're having a heart-to-heart, -heart, I don't like the way you've been standing me off. I had other visions. <laughs> Who's your friend? Mr. Steele, and he's the nicest man. He has such interesting things to say. <laughs> Why, do you know he spent a whole year in the nickel mines in Canada? Yes, right. He didn't find any nickel spills, but lots of bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always wanted to know about Canada. Now, Pop, let's go out and have a drink and you tell me all about it. How about my little girl here? Oh, I'll join you later when I'm through here. Okay, baby. How about it? Come on, hey, come on. Come on. You homesick? Come on, honey. Why don't you go home? I'll take you to the bus fair. I can't. Well, why not? I'm going to have a baby. Would he marry you, the louse? I don't know. He doesn't know. I only found out for sure a few days ago. Well, and for Pete's sakes, tell him. I don't even know where he is. He's in the army. He moved him to another camp somewhere. Well, he can't be on the moon. Come on, now, you got to find out. Supposing he doesn't answer you. Look, honey, we've got to find him. Now, I want you to write him. I don't even know how to put a thing like that into words. Come on. They're the simplest words in the language. Dear Sam or Joe, I'm going to have a baby. I thought you'd like to know. Your baby. Sincerely yours, etc., etc. Brief and to the point. Do the other girls know? Well, there's no sense in telling. Put his last note address on it, huh? I'll find it for you. I had to tell someone. I'm glad it was you. Oh, when you see Angie, you tell her to hold up here. The cops are burning for her, the stupid jerk. That drunk was able to describe her like he was her uncle. Well, I hope this does the trick. I can't wait to get rid of this kindergarten. Who's there? Telegrams from Mary, it was addressed to Dixon. I, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Angela, read it for me, will you? Pick up plane ticket at airport for six o'clock flight to Baltimore. I'll be waiting for you. I love you, Bob. And it is true. I thought it said that, but I just couldn't believe it. Six o'clock. That hardly gives me any time. I've got to hurry. I've got to pack. Angie, I'm going to him. I'm going to be his wife. The next one to go will be Audrey, and then I'll be right back where I started from, alone. Why don't you go home, sis? Oh, where's home? An empty apartment in a one-horse town? A hotel room in Acapulco? Or a cabin on a ship with a mother who doesn't know I'm alive? Well, there's nothing for you here. Tony, at least there's you. I've got something here. Come on, let's go away together, you and I. Come on. Now, you're talking like a kid. You're smart and you're sharp and all that, but you're still a kid. Goodbye, Angie. Father, I've got to write to my father.
So Mary's pulled out, hmm? Well, Sugar, you ready to throw in the towel? I'm not going home. Why? Because Mama doesn't understand her little girl? Do you understand her? Did she give you love? In her own way, I guess. Did you give her any? Well, you can't have given her too much, otherwise you would have forgiven her mistakes. Instead, you're trying to hurt her. And you know who you're really clobbering? Yourself. Look around you. Pretty, isn't it? I hate to tell you this, honey, but that's what you'll be like in two or three years if you're not in jail. Angela hiding from the police like a kid in a dark attic. Smart Angela. Grown-up Angela with a tongue like a dagger. Do you know what she really is? A frightened, lonely little baby who doesn't know how to act like one. I don't care about Angie. I'm going to make a new life of my own. <laughs> Some life. Or is it the big play that Tony is making for you? Has he offered to marry you yet? That's his trump card. If nothing else works, he throws that in. Well, come on, sugar. A few drunks just rolled in. You start making your new life with them. Two dances for a quarter. Special rates for cops. What about private detectives? Ah, oh, we don't even talk to them. This one can come back with a cop. Where is she? How do I know? I've never seen this kid. The bouncer said it might be Lola Marshall. Lola? <laughs> he ought to go on Milltown. He's nuts. Where is Lola now? Taking a break in the employee's room. Over that way. Get out the side door. They've got you spotted. Come on. Left late, huh? You spend more time here than you do your own apartment. Well, this was my apartment before you took over. I get lonesome for it. Did Dixie say when I can go back to work? You can't. You're hotter than a camel in the Sahara Desert. I'm in the clear. The old soap doesn't remember me at all. What's going to happen to me? You're a little late asking that question. I asked you not to come up here. You knew I wasn't any good for you. I never pretended to be anything else. I can't just stay up here cooped up the rest of my life. I go crazy. Let's go for a drive. I wouldn't be seen within a hundred yards of you. They're looking for you. Give me your keys. I'll go myself. They'll pick you up. I don't care. I've got to get out. You might be able to get away with it. You stick to these side streets. I don't even have you, Tony, for whatever that's worth. Oh, don't worry, baby. I'm not sticking around. that like you're going to Africa or something. Maybe even farther.
A youngster like that. Another statistic. I'll swear she went over deliberately. Are you kidding? A kid like that's got everything to live for. He still works. Sit down. I just want to talk. No rough stuff. Sit down. I have nothing to say to you, Tony. I'll stimulate the conversation. Work. It makes me sick. Sit down. Thank you. I'm George Barton. And this is my wife, Ruth. How do you do? Is she looking for a job here? Now, we've heard that one of your girls calls herself Lola Marshall, and we'd like to see her. Oh, she quit last night. So you're Mrs. Barton. She told me a lot about you. I got the idea that you're a lot younger. I've aged a lot in the last few weeks. I could make it worth your while. Well worth your while, if you'd help us to find her. Yeah. You're her parents, all right, throwing the money around. You do know where she is? We just want to talk to her. If I see her, I'll tell her. Please. Where are you staying? Hotel Marsh. Well, you stick around there, and if I can locate her, I'll call you. Thank you. Incidentally, get this Seamus off my tail, or I don't leave this place. Please, Tony. So it'll be the hard way. Pardon me, is this where I catch the helicopter to Honolulu? Was this the big one, Audrey, the marry me and we'll go away together one? Cut it out, Dixie. It was, wasn't it? Oh, I went for that line once and it worked. And he hasn't stopped using it since. Now, us girls want to compare notes. Take off, Tony. Where's Angie? She went for a ride. You let her go out there just to get your crack at Audrey? She wanted to change the scenery. Oh, you are a heel, Tony. You're not even good enough for me. Now go on, little boy. Take a walk. Now, sweetheart, you and me are going to exchange opinions. What shall I do? Just wait here for them. They'll be here soon. Well, you've got yourself a new set of pants, I think. But remember, for every flaw you find in them, look for one in yourself. You'll have to square yourself with the cops. But you'll survive. When will I see you again? Never, if you're lucky. Will you tell Angie goodbye for me? Sure, kid. 